So here we have it, the new one from Dainichi, Ginrin Karashigoi from uh, the Yellow Monkey Bloodline. These things, the moment I saw them, I got a little bit obsessed. I'm a big Karashigoi fan anyway. Uh, you'll be able to see the Okawa ones that I'm raising uh, this year, which is a lineage I'm very fond of. But the Ginrin element, I'm a big Ginrin fan anyway. And when Ginrin's done to the level that Dainichi does it, it is awe-inspiring. And yeah, these pretty much, that word sums these up, to be honest with you. Uh, the Ginrin, quali uh, Ginrin quality is on another level. When I saw the bone structures, I knew there was some serious parent fish behind these. Don't fully know all the details yet. When I get back to Japan, it's something I'll learn if we can get that information. I seem to think, looking at how some of them are progressing, there is strong a strong Chagoy presence in there, which Karashigoy are derived from Chagoy. So maybe it's that you know something along the way a big Chagoy has been used in the creation of these. And um, with them being probably, you know, early generation fish, that's yet to be fully worked out of them. But I really hope this is something they continue to produce. Uh, seeing a bit of mixed bag of results, colour wise, that was always going to be the thing with these, uh, knowing sort of where they headed. Uh, if we go straight in, we can see, you know, my number one example has damaged its dorsal fin slightly. But if we look at this absolute powerhouse, that bone structure, that gin ring quality. We see it probably more under the water there, just absolutely insane. It's got the real nice sort of yellow colour to it still. Uh, a couple of the others you can see are going a little bit on the darker side, like that one. And what is happening, uh, which is truly sort of, you know, I mean, this one is looking almost more Ginrin Chagoy like, but just with a phenomenal bone structure and this truly unique uh, edging to the scale there, which yeah i mean I'm, I'm all into the weird and wonderful when that happens this is looking you know an absolute treat at the minute with that ginrin level on it as well who knows where that's going to actually end up and it does seem like there's a couple more uh, heading that way you can see with this fish that's actually starting with the early signs of that happening uh, and there's another way i can sort of see it potentially underlying in them so who knows where we'll actually be at the end of the season with these all i do know is already given that stocking level the being in over 400 fish in that pond uh, these came at 28 to 32 cm uh, obviously still tosai we're now talking 35 up to 42 cm already i mean that's just just staggering really given we've not even been trying to grow these things so yeah, for now, I mean, these aren't going to stay residents in the main pond. They're going to be moved to uh, a different pond just with fish of a similar size. They're actually going to be grown with the Okawa Karashigoi that I've got because it's a perfect size and competition levels and everything in there should should really check out and, and balance up. But, yeah, really excited to see where the future heads with these. Just an interesting fact for you as well. Obviously these have been fetching some serious money. Anything new at Dainichi is always the same some of the ones later in the auctions uh, that were selling to stay in Japan, they've actually been uh, micro tagging them. So they can actually identify at the farm which fish is which, because as you can imagine, single colored fish like that, when there's a few kicking around, that could be really hard to tell whose fish is actually whose. So yeah, that technique has been used. We've seen it done at Sakai with the silver fox as well, just so they can keep identifying them. So uh, that'll just be a, a useful fact for you to know. But yeah, as, as it stands, not many of these in the marketplace. Uh, I managed to secure a box of the smaller tosai as well, which I had to fight arm and leg for, uh, tooth and nail for even. And uh, yeah, we're not gonna feature them in the video. Results have been, been a quite a mixed bag raising them so far, but there will be some. There's some nice examples come out of them, just not as many as I'd hoped. There's a few turns sort of red karashigoi for another variation, so really a lot to learn on these still and i will bring that information as soon as i can get it but really hope they continue with these because it's uh yeah i can see these being absolute monsters in future and it would be great to know what they've come from but for now we're going to see what they do over here in our uk water and what growth can actually be achieved with these uh they're going to have some monstrous crash going to compete against so uh yeah i think they can do the business and uh, yeah, it'd be great to see where they've got to by, by autumn time. So for now, we'll get these back in the pond and uh, bring some more updates whenever we can.